raised, you know, with the family. He would like spoon the, you know, the at night. He'd like, you know, it was like a little daughter to him, you know. And, no, he didn't, didn't say that, but he was really tight. This poor guy. So rich guy, poor guy, one new lamb. A traveler comes around to the rich guy's house. Says, dude, you know, you gotta hook a brother up, you know, I just need a place to stay, maybe a quick meal. Said, yeah, cool. The rich man, instead of whacking one of his, his animals, which he had plenty of them, and then feeding it to this guy, he goes next door. Goes next door, takes the only little ewe lamb that this dude had, took it, whacked it, fed it to the traveler. And David, Nathan's telling David this story, and David's just going, what? That happened in my country? Kill that man! Nathan looks and goes, Good man, David. David breaks and he pens Psalm 51. Let's read Psalm 51. Powerful, powerful psalm of repentance. Psalm 150, or excuse me, Psalm 51, verse 1. Let's read it now together. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving, loving kindness according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. He's going to say that again. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And you can underline this right here. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. I, in my Bible, I boxed in, I acknowledge. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. That's where it started for me. I could, I could have continued to do a real good high job, you know, look, look all Mr. Holy out and everything. But when I was doing it by myself, I could, have, I could have just kept that. No one would have known. But it's interesting, and you can, know, you can jot this down. Two scriptures I want you to write down. Proverbs 28 and 13 says this. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but... Whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. And then here's this, Numbers 32, 23. But if you don't do so, then take note. You have sinned against the Lord, and be sure that your sin will find you out. <laughs> That's what was happening in David's life, man. But because God loved this guy so much, he had to make sure that this sin came to, came to light so it could be dealt with. Do you know that's what will happen in your life? You can either go, man, pastor got me. I, I, I truly want this, this plaque to just flow free. I, I need to be able to repent and turn to God. Maybe you look to other brothers or sisters. Keep, keep me accountable. I really want to grow through this. Or you can allow it to surface because God loves you too much. Pastor Chuck Smith says this. God loves us too much to let us get away with the kind of behavior that will destroy us. That's God's heart. It's not, again, this big ogre in the sky saying, I want to throw salt in your game. It's like, it's this loving father that says, I just love you too much. There's got to be something done about it. Let's continue on. Psalm 51, verse 4. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. That you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you will make me to know wisdom. And this is what I underline in my Bible, verse 7. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be water, whiter as snow. I love that. Purge me, wash me. Isaiah 1.18, you know that. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be whiter as snow. Jesus is wanting to. He's ready and willing to wash you and cleanse you. Verse 8, make me hear joy and gladness that, my, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Underline that, please. Blot out all my iniquities. Listen. There are some of you in here Let's just, this is like a little side Bible study real quick. That have repented. You've repented from your past sin. And some of them have been big, huge blunders. Me included. I'm right here. 
But sometimes, you know what Satan will do? He'll try to bring those past sins back up to you and tell you, God can't really love you. He can't really forgive you. And you'll have a hard time getting past that and you won't, you'll have a hard time forgiving yourself. For you, please write these, these verses down. They are power to you. Jeremiah 31 and 34. Jeremiah 31, 34. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. Psalm 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. That's Psalm 103, 12. And finally, and here it is, Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. What? That's like that little erase marker, you know, like that, that thing that you just you write and then you just kind of go, just, just next thing you know, it's, just, it's gone. He's blotted out your sins. Unfortunately, sometimes when, we, when we're holding on to that past sin, God's forgiven you. He doesn't remember it, and you're bringing it up. He's like, what are you talking about? You know what that's like? And I, and I want you to do this on your way home. Just real quickly, though. When you're driving home, just look in the rearview mirror. Don't look out the windshield. Just look in the rearview mirror and start. just try to drive for a little bit. See how that works out for you. I tried that yesterday, dude. I was like, oh, boy. This is not safe. <laughs> Listen, some of us are continually looking in the, in the past. Hey, that's gone. We're going to crash. Look out the windshield. God's forgiven you. Move past. Some of you need to hear it. Hold on to this. You've been forgiven. Move past that. The Bible says old things have passed away. All things become new. God's grace is sufficient for you. Side Bible study. Sorry. Back in Psalm 51. Psalm 51 and 10. Psalm 51 and 10. Here's the first stop of the spiritual angioplasty. Psalm 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast away from your presence. Don't cast me away. And don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Boy, it's clogged, man. I feel you. I just, there's something not right. The power's not there. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way and sinners shall be converted to you. Pause right there. Verse 10 says, create in me a clean heart. Now I want you to picture now that surgeon, the surgeon, going to work on your heart. You got cad. I got cat. He goes in and he's doing surgery. He's going to go in and do some angioplasty and start removing some of that plaque, start widening that so that reconnection can happen again. Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit with me. In Christianese terms, that's called sanctification. You guys ever heard that going, what? Sanct? Sanct what? What is that? Sanctification. That's a daily intake of God's Spirit that completely starts cleaning you out little by little. How does that happen? One of the things that, um, that my wife challenged me to do in the morning when I take a shower, just start praying for, for cleaning every day. This is not just a one-time thing. It's not just going in for surgery. Yeah, we need to have that when we repent and really ask God to remove it, but then it's an ongoing process. So a lot of times I'll be, God, just you know, take all that stuff out of me. Clean, clean me. You know, a lot of times in the morning, um, after working out, I'll go into the, into the steam room. I've told you guys about that. And I'll sit in that steam room, and I'll pray that prayer. God, remove that iniquity, that, that stuff that, that's just that's yuck in my heart. And uh, you know what he does in that steam room? Boy, that, that thing goes on. You ever been in that steam room? And I'm just like, you know. Next thing you know, like, I got snot coming out of my nose. I got... Sweat coming out of places. I didn't know that sweat, you know. And, and, but there's this, there's something that goes on in my life. And, and I'm asking God, remove me of myself, the, the yuck in my heart. So I can honor you by, by being a vessel that I can teach your people your word. I can't do it on my own. I'll get in the way. 
Come, we create in me a clean heart. So it starts with that daily prayer.